Hello everyone, welcome to another new video. Today we'll be covering A2 Business, uh, a chapter from operational, operational Strategy, which is called Critical Path Analysis, or in short, we call it CPA. So, in CPA, we have a few things that we need to learn. So, first of all, it's the network diagram well in previous syllabus we the candidates had to draw the network diagram but in the upcoming exams or even in 2020-23 the network diagram drawing the network diagram was removed from the syllabus so uh, we guys are lucky that we don't have to draw the network diagram anymore but knowing how to draw the network diagram is very important this is because we need to calculate two other things, which is the critical path and our EST, LFT and the floats. We're all gonna we're gonna cover all of this in today's video. And I hope I can make you guys clear about how to have the appropriate approach for this kind of questions. So let's start with the critical diagram first. Sorry, let's start with the network diagram first. So while drawing a network diagram, there are circles that are called nodes, right? So we have two nodes for one activity so this is called the starting node and we call this one the end node and i think the word speaks for itself the start node is when an activity starts and the end node is when an activity ends now we're gonna divide this node into three segments So, in this part, we write the, num the node number. So, if this is the first node number, then we're going to write it in 1. If this is the second one, we're going to write it as 2. And in this segment, we write the EST number or the EST value for the activity. And below that, we write the LFT. Similarly, we have to write the EST and LFT here. And on this straight line, this straight line, what we're going to write is the name of the activity. Let's say the activity is B. And below our B activity, we're going to write the duration for our activity. So let's say the duration here is six days. So this is um, a typical node diagram. Of very simple one EST means our earliest start time this is where the, the earliest start time means the earliest time an activity starts right the word speaks for itself and LFT means the latest finish time So the latest finish time is the quickest time the activity or okay I think we're clear with this two part now in our exams we have to calculate EST and LFT so how do we calculate EST and LFT that is what we're gonna learn in the next part so let's so here we have an example of a question that might come luckily we don't have to draw it but for this example or for this case, I'm going to try and draw the network diagram first and then explain it to you guys. So first of all, we're going to start with our starting node, which is this. And I'm going to segment it just like uh, we did in our... So now we're going to draw this and also 
the end note now okay all right so this would be our first note this would be our second note and for this case we're going to start with activity a so this is going to be our activity a and the duration is given it's six weeks so we're going to write six here now for activity b our preceding activity is a so this means after we're done with our a activity only then we can start our b activity so here we are done with our a activity and the a, the the end note for the A activity is going to be our starting note for our B activity. So what we're going to do is draw the B note now. And here's our circle. Right. Draw the segments, uh, the name of the activity and the number of weeks. It's two. All right. Now next one we have C. Now focus now look here for c it is given that the preceding activity is a which means when we are done with our a activity then we can start our c activity so since we can start our c activity right after a ends we're gonna draw we're gonna branch out from the a end note so this would be our c activity and for c activity we have six weeks all right Similarly for D the preceding activity is A. So we're gonna branch out another one from the top and Draw a line. This would be our D activity and for D it's five Great now moving on number E for E activity the preceding activity is B so when B ends we can draw our E activity So here's the line. Let me draw the circle Right. So this is going to be our E activity and activity E has 8 weeks of time or duration. Now for our F it's when E ends so same concept here. Draw this. So E and this is our F activity and this would be three weeks. All right, I think we need to sh resize this or else there isn't going to be enough space to draw the whole diagram. So let's resize it a bit. All right, so after F ends, we have G. So G has two preceding activities. One is C and one is F. So when g starts c should end right so we're gonna when c and f starts g should end sorry my bad when g starts f and c should end so i'm just gonna start with g here and this is going to be your g activity and we're gonna write here too now we have to pull this up and give this here now look here for C, the starting note is this one, and for C, the end note is this one, right? So here C is ending and G is starting, and here F is ending and G is starting. So we have fulfilled our criteria for this one, all right? And lastly, we have our H activity, and H activity has a similar concept to C activity. So for C here, Sorry, for H here, we're going to draw a same line here and the circle segment it out. So this is our H activity. So when G ends, H starts and when D ends, H starts. So we're going to end D here. So we're done with D and we're done with the network diagrams. And now we're going to write the node numbers for five, six and seven. We have seven nodes now. So we have done the easy part or so now we're done with drawing the diagram now what we have to find is 
EST and LFT for each nodes. How do we do that? To find EST, we have a very simple concept here. We're gonna go from left to right. Repeat with me, left to right. So this is our EST. And what are we gonna do? We're gonna add the duration with every nodes we go, right? We're gonna add the duration. And whenever, whenever the nodes overlap, we're gonna take the greater number or the greater duration. For overlapping, notes and you'll understand what I mean by this in a minute so our starting EST and LFT is gonna be zero because a is being started at day one so before a there was no activity so there was no early start time or there is no uh, our uh, latest finish time now when you move on, move on to activity B what is the EST gonna be so EST is gonna be 6 because we add the duration. So for A we have 6 duration and we're gonna add the duration here. And similarly we're gonna go on to activity E here. It's gonna be 6 plus 2 is 8 and 8 plus 8 is 16. 16 plus 3 is 19. Alright. Now here we have an overlapping situation here. C and F overlap. So we're gonna have to choose the greater duration. So, if we have this, if we see the F one, F become F is F has 19 days, and for C, it's six plus six. Six plus six is 12. So which one is greater? 19, right? So we're gonna go with 19. Same concept with G here. Um, 19 plus two is 21, and five plus six is 11. So the greater one is 21, so we're going to go with 21, and we're going to add the last one, which is going to be 22. Alright, good job, we're done with our EST, now we're going to start our LFT. So for LFT, it's, a, it's the opposite of EST. We're gonna go from right to left. We're gonna go from right to left. And we're gonna subtract the duration. And we're gonna take the lower duration number for overlapping nodes. So since we're going from right to left this is going to be 22 we're going to deduct here it's going to be 21 now for the next one it is um, 21 minus 2 which is uh, 19 and it's going to be 19 because we don't have any overlapping here same here is going to be 16 this is going to be 8 here we have two, three overlaps, C, B, and D. Now, if we subtract 8 from 2, it becomes 6. If we subtract 19 from 6, it becomes 13. And if we subtract 19 from 5, it becomes 14. So, which one is the lower number? 6, right? So, it's going to be 6 here. And that's how you're going to calculate LFT and EST for your diagrams. Now, after you're done calculating the EST and LFTs, we need to determine our critical path. So critical path are the activities, critical path or critical activities. These are activities which cannot be delayed because if we delay these activities, the whole project is going to de get delayed and the managers don't want that. So, to, so how do we figure out our critical activity? If the EST and LFT is the same, then we have a critical activity. So for here, H is our critical activity, G is our critical activity, 
F is the orbital activity E, B and A. So B, sorry, D and C is not a critical activity. So this means if we delay C and D, the whole project is not going to get delayed. It's still going to end after 22 weeks, right? That is why figuring out the critical path is important for the business. And after we're done with the diagram, there is two things you need to calculate if the question asks you that. So we call them total float and free float. So there is a formula for total float. So total float, the formula for total float is LFT minus the du duration minus the EST. And for free float, the formula is EST for the next activity minus duration. minus the EST for the activity you are given to calculate. Alright, now let's say we're going to have to find the active total float for activity um, E. We're, we have to find the total float for activity E. Now let's uh, scroll upwards. For E, our LFT is 16, right? Latest finish time for E is 16. So after 16 weeks, the activity E should end. Now we're gonna deduct the duration for activity E, which is eight weeks. And we're gonna take the EST, the EST for E is eight. Now, if you do the math, this would become zero weeks. This means that we don't have any extra time for E. That So if we delay E, and since we have already deduced that E is a critical activity, if we delay E, the whole project is gonna get delayed. There are no spare time for E to sit idle. So you have to finish E, and then you have to move on to the next one. So if we do a non-critical activity, let's say we're gonna do it C, the LFT for C is 19, the duration is 6, and the EST is also 6. So this would become 19 minus 6 minus 6 is 7. So we have 7 weeks of idle time we can spend for C. So if C sits idle for 7 weeks, the whole proje project is not going to get delayed. So the managers can focus on C a bit less compared to the critical activity ones. All right, now then for the next one, we have free float. Uh, if we do it for E again, so the EST for E is eight, and the duration is also eight, and the EST for the next, sorry, it's for the next activity. So the ES, so the next activity for E is F, and the EST for F is 16, minus duration of E, minus the EST of E. So this would become zero again. So what free float means is if we delay E, our next activity F is gonna get delayed. So this is more of a um, narrowed down to activity wise so that the next activity don't get delayed and this is for the total project, the whole project that we're conducting. And with that, we can conclude our critical path analysis chapter. There's a bit more decision making, evaluation things in this chapter, which, for example, what should the manager do with this data, right? So the managers can use this data to take decisions, important decisions. De decisions include. Um, if they should allocate
more resources on certain activity. So when we are when you found our critical activity, businesses can managers can allocate more resources for those activity rather than the ones that are not critical. So let's say for C here, we can use C's resources for another activity. Let's say it's D. So since we have our six seven weeks time, we can use the resources here and then we can all use the resources on C within those seven weeks. These are, these are the decision makings the managers can take. I think going over the book or looking at the notes, you can drive those things more quickly and more efficiently. Since I don't have a case in front of me, I cannot go in depth. But yeah, this is how you should go with a critical path analysis question. It's a pretty simple one, but I find that many candidates have difficulties in answering certain questions like this. I hope this video was helpful for you guys and that's all. Thank you for watching this video and I'll see you on the next one.